Here we are in the Turkey Point Cooling Canals. It's the uh, cooling system for the Turkey Point power plant. The way the cooling canal system works is there's a total of 39 canals. There are 32 canals to the west of us and seven canals to the east of us. The canals to the west are where the warm water come out from the plant. They traverse about five miles to the south. They come across the South Collector Canal and then return to the north in these seven canals out uh, to the east of us here. And this system is used to cool Turkey Point nuclear power plants, units one and two, and our existing fossil fuel plant, unit one. In 2013, we had a, a very, very low rainfall year. And this system is a rainfall driven system and driven by some connection with groundwater. And so in 2014, uh, with the system was very low going into uh, the summer season, the, the hotter season where we operate the plants more. There was also an, an algae bloom and we learned that the, the flow through the system, like the radiator of your car, wasn't flowing as efficiently. And as a result, uh, there were areas where the water was warming up and uh, so the water, overall water temperature started to increase. And so we started a program to uh, remove some of the sediment from these canals and, and, and uh, improve the flow through the radiator. Uh, and also improve the water quality, which helps uh, manage the heat and also helps us manage the algae. So, and as a result, although we did see an increase in temperature, we've also been able to see that temperature come down to the way the system has operated for 40 years. You know, when the uprate happened, uh, and which is basically adding components to the existing plants to, so they could output a, a few more megawatts, uh, when that happened, uh, and shortly after we started the units back up, that's when we started to see the war warm temperature. It just so happens that that coincided with the low rainfall year and the algae and, and the, what we've learned about the, the radiator not flowing as efficiently as it had in the past. Uh, before we brought the uprated units online, we actually decommissioned one of our older units on site. And that site, that plant itself actually, when it operated, added more heat to the cooling canal system than the uprate did. So there was actually a net decrease in heat added to the cooling canal system. And I think what you'll see through time as we operate that we'll be able to maintain that temperature lower like we did historically. We did receive approval from the NRC to operate the canals at a, at a warmer peak temperature, the, the temperature that the water can actually go through the power plant. And because we were facing that challenge in, to, in the summer of 2014, uh, we, with the improvements we've made, we, we didn't even come close to that last year. And we expect if we, if we you know, maintain the appropriate flow through the system and, and water quality appropriately, that we'll, we'll be able to manage it without challenging that, that higher level of temperature. Yes, yeah, so there's really two approaches we're focused on right now for Im improving the cooling canal and its relationship uh, with the groundwater. We uh, are freshening the canal system to keep it uh, at a salinity that's very close to bay water. And, and that way we're not producing more, more salt uh, in the environment. And then at the same time, we're uh, developing, working very closely with Miami-Dade County, an extraction system to put wells into the aquifer and extract the hypersaline water. And that's water that's saltier than bay water. Take that water and inject it into a zone uh, deep, deep into the ground where the county actually discharges its wastewater currently today. So we think through those two measures, we'll be able to operate the system more effectively and not produce more salt in the environment and then take back the salt that, that was out there from historical operation.